coming up on Unsound Advice. Was it really fun to go see the Eiffel Tower and then not have sex that night? Well, well we spooned. <laughs> yeah. We spooned for a little bit. That's exactly we so, what I said. We're so yeah. full on pizza. And, uh, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was more about the Eiffel Tower than us. We didn't want to make it about us. Right. Because you're not into him. Um, we enjoyed giving advice to young couples. For sure. Who were hooking up in hostels. Did you know you're describing night. a friend right now? <laughs> <laughs> what advice did you give them? We, my favorite was this girl came up to us to ask to take a picture and she was like, I'm... And then this guy came up with his arm around her and she was like, we just met at a hostel. And she's like, how perfect. And I was like, girl, no Taylor Swift song is real life. Yeah. This isn't this isn't your Taylor Swift music Except video. Except the bad ones about mm-hmm. becoming miserable. Yeah. I was like, that's this is this is how this is going to end. Yeah. In a sad Taylor Swift song. Yeah. I mean, pizza and spooning doesn't sound bad. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Yeah. Just a lot of farts. <laughs> <laughs> Twice in the last month, I had to come pick her up from a guy's house drunk at 4.30 in the morning. Do I just assume he's not interested anymore? So I'm in my second marriage. My first one ended because my wife cheated on me and my second wife is starting to act in a similar way. Hey, Laura. Hi, Laura. Hi. Hey there. Um, I know you're a 12-step program person, so I was just wondering, how do you break up with a hairstylist? A bunch of my coworkers are really bad at their jobs. And I wanted to try, you know, bringing her back into my life. I'm just wondering if you had any guidance for me. Give me a strategy here. Where where do I start? How do I even begin? And how do I stop eating cookies? Because I love cookies so much. Thanks a lot, Laura. You're the best. Hi, welcome to Unsound Advice with Laura Bites. I'm Laura Bites. My guest today is a very talented comedian who has been seen on The Tonight Show and Vice TV's Super Maximum Retro Show and her debut album, Salt Daddy, hit number one on the iTunes charts. Everybody, Catherine Blanford. Catherine, thank you so much for joining us. Thank me. you so much uh, for having us here. <laughs> I just updated that bio six hours ago. No shit. Yes. Well, I know JP it pulled it five hours ago. Thank you so much, JP. There you go. Um, what a beautiful, cute intro you have there. Oh, thank you very much. JP made that. Are those real people? Those are real calls. Yeah. Those aren't just your children. <laughs> Were there that many problems? How old do you think his kids are? <laughs> They're kids. <laughs> Those are adults. Feeling like, Dad, what's a dinner party? He's like, say this or you won't have dinner. Say it into the mic, sweet pea. (laughs) Child labor. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Well, you and I first met when I did your podcast, Cheaties, Mm -hmm. uh, with Lace Larrabee. And that was so funny because my boyfriend told my boyfriend cheated on me very shortly after that and told me about it like two weeks later. And you had given me a knife. Yeah. Which was funny. And I don't think I told you this. He actually gave me a taser the morning of the night that he cheated on me. Isn't that the hilarious? The morning after? No, the the day he cheated on me, that morning he gave me a taser. That night he cheated on me. And then he told me about it like a week later. Uh, was he was the cheat premeditated or a crime of passion? It was premeditated a little bit. Like he told me... That he did it so that, oh man, I never finished this story with Eric. He told me that he did it so that he could work up the courage to break up with me. Mm. Had he been talking to this person before or flirting? I don't think he'd ever met her. I think he just did it to do it. He wanted a, he he needed uh, to plan a bomb yeah. to walk away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It was premeditated then. Yeah. He already mean, made up his mind. He could have just walked away. And right. that would have worked for me. But, but he needed a reason to run away. Yeah. He yeah. needed to lock the door behind him. Right. Yeah, that was premeditated. Why did he give you the taser then? I think it was unrelated. No. Uh, to defend myself in the night, maybe because he knew he was leaving. Oh, because you're going to now be defenseless. You're right. going to be all by yourself as a single Although he only <laughs> slept over like once or twice a week anyway. But Did he, when he told you about the cheating, did he bring up the taser? <laughs> no. No. Okay. Yeah. It feels as if the taser was part of the breakup package. And it's like a, it was like a scavenger hunt. Yeah. You know what else he did? And I want to say this was the night that he broke up with me. He mounted my TV on my wall. He goes. Which was awesome. I'm like, thank you so much. This was, okay, here's the movie. 
breakup bucket list. <laughs> yeah. And before he breaks up Dude, with you. you shouldn't <laughs> even be pitching that publicly. <laughs> like, that is a fucking movie. It's so good. Before, and like, and you're, and I'm your best friend and you're calling me and you're like, all of a sudden, he's turned into this great guy. Yeah. He gave me a taser. He mounted my TV. Yeah. He built me a doghouse. And I'm going, uh -uh. He did all the he guy stuff. He changed my oil in my car. Yeah. And was like, make sure you get this changed. And I was like, why don't you do it again? And just he laughed and walked away. <laughs> he tried to help me mount my sconces, but I didn't feel like it. And I didn't know that I was about to get broken up with or I would have been like, oh, yeah, let's do this. Was he really pushing it? Was he like, you'll never get this opportunity again? He didn't say you'll never get this opportunity again, but he absolutely was pushing it. <laughs> he brought it up repeatedly. He was like, come on, let's get those. Let's get those up. And I was like, I, no, I don't feel like it. The more you tell me, because you started off being like he cheated on you. Yeah. And I was like, bad guy. Right. The more you talk, the more I'm on his side. Well, he's available if you feel like dating someone you like <laughs> a, for a, a little guy? bit. Yeah. If you put handyman over loyalty, he's your guy. I don't, as it turns <laughs> out. Yeah. No, I would rather like pay someone to you, mount my TV. Than... You would rather sit there and hold hands with someone I mean, who loves point, you and watch someone else mount your sconces for you. Absolutely. But at this point, I would rather be out of that relationship than have sconces on my wall. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, yeah. Be, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. So, but you are all the way out. Oh, yeah. Have okay, been good. since January. Okay. So, when you were telling us on the podcast, the wildest thing is you were like, I, I trust this guy times a thousand. We tell each other everything. I know he wouldn't cheat on me. We're honest about everything else. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, he was honest about the fact that he had cheated on me. He did it and then told you immediately? He told me like a week later, which is such a gross feeling when you're like, I've mm -hmm. like been with you. Like yeah. we hadn't had sex since then, but like, I'm like, you were in my bed. Like get the fuck out of here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've had this weird roller coaster with infidelity since I, we started doing the podcast. Yeah. Uh, Because at first I, we started it because I had recently been cheated on mm -hmm. and I was like, I felt that, that disgusting, gross feeling. Yeah. And then I think, I don't know if it's because I've listened to so many stories and become numb to it, or maybe it's just because I've been in such a long-term relationship now where I'm not empathetic to people that cheat, but I have, I used to think like cheating and infidelity was such a, uh, um, like a, sh like such a, disrespectful thing you're doing to the other person. Yeah. And now I've come to terms with it. Like the person that's cheating, they're not doing it at the other person. It's like they're so, they're, they have so much messed up. They have a lot of, there's so much issues in their own self. Yeah. And that they, they, they have to like act out in this way. And I've, it doesn't, infidelity doesn't seem as such a hard pill to swallow anymore. Yeah. I, I have talked to my therapist about it and she said that almost all the time it's just like wounded little boy stuff. And sometimes it's because the man is not feeling respected. She said that it's not about sex. Yes. And she said that some couples come back stronger than they've ever been. Yeah. Um, which, you know, none of which I cared to hear after my boyfriend had cheated on me. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, we're not going to do that. But yeah, I mean, I think it, rare cases do you come back stronger than you've ever been uh but i do think a lot of times it's it is the super easy excuse to walk away yeah so feelings. much other stuff was wrong and i was ready for it to be over i just wasn't 100 percent sure and so i hadn't ended it and i think that we were both kind of there and i even we had had a conversation maybe a week before or maybe, I don't know how long before, but where basically I told him like, if this was beginning to wind down, like if it was time for us to kind of go our separate ways that I would be okay with that. Like I was like, if you want to have that conversation, like let me know and we can do that. And he was like, no, I just want to change your sconces. And I think he was like, thank you. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. 
And then he started doing handiwork around the house. Which is which is wild because I'm like, he didn't have to cheat on me. Yeah. Yeah, I don't... Uh, I guess I... I know. I I think I, I'm again. I'm not. I'm not excusing cheating at all. Uh, I just wonder if it's um, their way of emotionally separating. Like, cause they, cause he probably still felt attached to you, and he was like, I gotta just, I gotta rip the bandaid off. I gotta prove to myself that I I can be with somebody else too. And da, da, da. again, it's never about them. I think I wonder if it was just his way of being like, let me just. Yeah. Let me just rip the Band-Aid off. Yeah, and it's always dumb because it's like what they're hoping to get out of it. I don't hear them getting that out of it a lot. Like he told me that he just wanted to feel what it would be like to be with someone else. And then it just made him miss me. And I'm like, I should I be comforting you? Like, what do you need from me knowing that? You know what I mean? Yeah. He he's. He's confused. He is saddened that it's over because when things are over, there's still feelings. Mm -hmm. There's still attachment. Yeah. You can't just be like, oh, it's black and white. I'm in the door. I'm out the door. Bye bye. Never. So, but but people like expect it to be that way. So it's like, oh, I'm I'm out, but I'm not all the way out. You, You have to like sit with your feelings and know that you can be in two places at one point and not. And and not have to like be mad or angry that you're still in two places. Yeah. And just give it time. But that's a hard thing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So imagine me dating. I can't even do friendship. You have a boyfriend. Yeah. How's that going? Um, I love my dog so much. It and seems like it's getting really serious. But when I talk to you, it sounds like you don't want it to. Like, I feel like you've had one foot out like the whole time. And then I see pictures. I believe. Did I just see you guys at the Eiffel Tower? Okay. Is that what I just saw? Uh, yes. Yeah, at a Belgian that. wedding was before that. Or what yes. are we doing here? And he kept wow. going. He kept going. Uh, will you post a picture of us on your main? He goes, I know you think it's stupid. He's like, but it just when you look at your your Instagram, it doesn't even look like you have a boyfriend. Yeah, it's because I, I don't mean to. When I do his voice, it makes me make him sound dumb. That's my guy voice too, and but it's I just because I can't. Open, you yeah, know. Blah, blah, blah. that's how I do every but day. But when guys <laughs> no one has ever sounded do like an that. impression of a girl, they're like, "Do you just? Do you just?" Right. You know when guys do that, and you're like, "You don't have to do that." Yeah. Uh, but he was like, "I know it sounds dumb, but will you, will you please post a picture with us so people know you have a boyfriend?" And so I posted it, and this the only comments about having a boyfriend are from, like, women being like, I can't believe you had a boy. Because I've posted, like, clips recently of of having girls on stage and people keep commenting, like, the gay panic or they went home together afterwards, blah, blah, blah. So I'm I'm assuming I've created this kind of maybe lesbian persona. And right, because like, your hair's not down to however long. Is that what, is that what makes me a lesbian? I mean, I don't see anything that makes you a lesbian. I don't know either, but it was just these comments on these things, and I say whatever sell tickets. So, <laughs> so, so I posted this picture, and I put him and I in the front of the little, the the, the clips, right, the picture things, and uh-huh. it was just women commenting like, "Oh, so you have a boyfriend? I hate you so much." Yeah. So I just sent him those, and I was like, this "Little did you know, your competition the whole time, yeah, was Leslie from Florida." Uh. Did that make him feel any better? I don't know. He didn't respond. I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm really digging for a way out of this one. <sighs> He's in Atlanta. I go back all the time and visit him. I know. And, but you're uh, not into him. No, I... I ain't, no, no, you're not. No, I am. I am. It's, uh-huh. But you're not. Because when people are, they're not like, I am. We've been dating for three and a half years. So? No, I am. Do you know what the sunk cost fallacy is? The, um, I don't speak that language. It's where you like have put so much time and investment into something that you're like, well, I don't want that to have been for nothing. So I'm just going to stick with this thing. Yeah, that makes sense. That sounds like uh, like boomers, like boomer marriages. Sure. Yeah. It sounds like your relationship, too. I've just never <laughs> heard you even say that like you're into him. <laughs> like I've never heard anything that sounds like you're into him. I just don't think I talk like that. But when asked flat out, are you are you into him? I'm trying not to sigh before I answer all of these things. That's I think my it's point. The, I no, it's not that I'm not into him. I think I am uh, 
asexual and not really into any romantic relationships. But including him then. You know, he is just the one that 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 fell through the cracks. So um, it's been really good and um, <laughs> couldn't be better. We couldn't be better. It is, Can we have that be the clip? Is her sounding like she just ate a plate of shit and the, then is saying it's going really the good? The passion <laughs> is through the roof. We just... How we, was it really fun to go see the Eiffel Tower and then not have sex that night? Well, well we spooned. <laughs> Yeah. We spooned for a little bit. That's exactly we so, what I said. We're so yeah. full on pizza. And uh um yeah, it was it was it was more about the Eiffel Tower than us. We didn't want to make it about us. Right. Because you're not into him. Um, we enjoyed giving advice to young couples for sure who were hooking up in hostels. Did you know you're describing night. a friend right now? <laughs> Uh, more, uh, more, more like a family member. What advice did you give them? <laughs> That's so funny. What advice did you give them? We, my favorite was this girl came up to us to ask to take a picture and she was like, I'm, and then this guy came up with his arm around her and she was like, we just met at a hostel. And she's like, how perfect. And she was from California and he was like, I'm, like you I'm have crabs from tonight. Florida. Yeah. He was like, I, yeah. I go to UF, I go to University of Florida. And she's, and I'm like, this is so cute. Maybe, maybe you'll see. You'll see each other again one day. And she's like, I know. And then he like, he takes a long pause and he's like, well, I don't know. I'm still in school. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, this is obviously just for now. Right. 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 Yeah. And I was like, girl, no Taylor Swift song is real life. Yeah. This isn't, this isn't your Taylor Swift music Except video. the bad ones about mm -hmm. becoming miserable. Yeah. I was like that's, this is, this is how this is going to end. Yeah. In a sad Taylor Swift song. Yeah. yeah. I mean, pizza and spooning doesn't sound bad. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Yeah, just a lot of farts. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Hey, should we take a call? Give advice to someone? I can't wait. I'm genius. <laughs> I don't think my answer is going to be helpful. Then what makes you think you're going to be good at this? Being uh, good at it is giving a helpful answer, Catherine. No, 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 no. It will work what I say. Well, then it's a helpful answer. Well, okay. I don't think it's. I don't think it will be the advice that uh, uh, a licensed professional would say. That's fine. We no. don't claim to be licensed professionals. Perfect. Yeah. Hey, Lara. A big fan of the podcast. I just wanted to, your advice on. Um, I have a hard time setting boundaries with uh, friends and acquaintances who ask me to do things, and I'm wondering if you had any advice on how to set boundaries with people because. I need to get more of my life stuff done. And I love hanging out with my friends, um, but I I have a hard time saying no to people. So any advice would be very helpful. Thanks, Laura. Well, JP, I'm just convinced these are all JP calling in They're different not. voices. <laughs> that was not JP. Should I look at JP when I answer I, his question? I mean, it's not going to be great for the sound because your mic's in front of your face mm -hmm. and you're turning around to talk Sorry, to JP. JP. So I'm I'm not loving it. I mean, I think an occasional glance back is perfectly fine. Like this. <laughs> but just stay. Uh, You're giving him the stink eye on that. But well, I don't well, know if this JP is what you need like to do it. to your friends, JP, because <laughs> they're using you. Okay. <laughs> One word comes to mind immediately uh, is schedule. Sometimes when you, I think sometimes with boundaries with friends is because you give them your time and energy when you wish you would give it to yourself. And I've done this recently is like, it sounds wild, but wake up in the morning and if you've got, if you go sit there and you say, what, what do I want to accomplish today? Or what do I need to do? Blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And you plan out your day. And then if there's certain things you want to sit there and accomplish or whatever else, you set a, I'm doing, I'm working on this from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. today. I'm putting my phone down. If someone calls me, if I, I'm not going to give anyone else my time until I commit this hour or two hours to whatever I'm focusing on. That's along the lines of like boundaries, meaning that people are taking advantage of your time and energy. Yeah, my like favorite skill that I've developed in the past five years is saying no because I don't feel like it yeah. and not lying about it. And there are plenty of ways to say no because you don't feel like it. 
without lying about it and without saying, I don't feel like it. You know what? I've got too much on my plate right now. Sorry, I won't be able to do it. You yeah. know, like whatever, just because even if the too much you have on your plate is like you blocked out an afternoon to rest, that doesn't mean they get your afternoon mm-hmm. of free time and availability are different things. Time off from work and availability are two different things. And, I, and in my experience, saying no is like any other muscle. It's like you start working out. It's hard. It's hard to get yourself to the gym. Mm-hmm. It's hard to get through your workout. The more you work out and you feel better, you have more energy, you start to see results, the easier it becomes to get to the gym. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's the same thing with saying no to shit you don't want to do. Like the more you do it, it was very uncomfortable to me to send the first message to a person who asked me to do a podcast and just say like, you know what, I'm really focusing on other stuff right now. Thanks for thinking of me. You know, because I didn't want her to think I was a bitch. But at the same time, I was like, well, I don't want to do your podcast either, though. And someone, a piece of advice I got once that I thought was really good advice was, if you can only make one person happy, make yourself happy. Yeah. Like, if I do it and I don't want to, I'm going to be unhappy. If I don't do it and they want me to, they're going to be unhappy. Um, Maybe not super unhappy, but it's not the answer they want when they ask you to do something. So if one of us is going to be unhappy, I'm going to choose myself to be the happy mm-hmm. one. Yeah, and they and can find someone on. else. Yeah, they can find someone else, but yeah. I can't get that afternoon back or whatever. Do you feel like, like being okay? So after you work on saying no, after a couple of times, when you first say no, that anxiety is still there. Yeah, and it's like no, and just knowing that you're gonna say no, and then knowing after you say no, at least for the first couple of times, you're not gonna feel good about it. It's gonna feel a little icky, and just being like. Be okay with feeling icky. Yeah. So, don't don't yeah. force yourself to feel fine just because you said no. Be okay with feeling icky and then know the more that you say no, that icky will reside. Reside? Yeah, reside. and it, feel, it feels now when I say no, I get the same feeling that people get when they cancel plans. Feels good. Feels good. So I think something that might be helpful is even like write it on your calendar. Write the thing on your calendar, even if it's a hang the next day. Write it on your calendar, the thing that you don't want to do. And then when that day comes, look at it and be like, I don't have to fucking do that because I said no to that show that was going to pay me $20. I said no to that hang that wasn't going to elevate me in any way that I didn't really feel like doing. I would rather have taken a nap and then go take a nap or do whatever you want to do. Clean your place, read a book, watch a show. Yeah. Do whatever you want to do with the time that you got back. Yeah. Because you said no. And that feels fucking good dude because that was what it that was what it came down to for me is like when this comes up on my calendar am I going to want to do it or am I going to be like I'm wasting my time I should have said no to that I might cancel it because it's 20 bucks for a show or I don't feel like it I'm tired I don't want to drive to the other side of town to spend money on a lunch I don't really feel like having Mm -hmm. you know what I mean like it's okay to not want to do that I think we should water our friendships frankly probably more than I actually do really I I don't hang out with my friends outside of shows. Like, oh, water. Almost Good ever. F- nourish. Yeah. yeah. I thought you were saying dilute. No, n- I see what you mean. No. Yet yeah, nourish. Nourish. Tend to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. How about this, though? Pavlov's dog. Every time you say no, give yourself a little treat. Oh, I like that. Give yourself a little cupcake. I like that. Or a pop brownie or whatever. Or maybe just pat on the back. Or a fucking nap during nap. the time that you're not <laughs> hanging out with that person. You know, it reinforces itself. And that's what I'm talking yeah. about. It's like, it gets easier. Like, mm-hmm. I don't mind saying no now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if there's something I really don't want to say no to, I say yes. But I don't say yes to stuff just to say yes to it. You really want to say yes. I say yes if I want to do it. Yeah. I. Yeah. It feel, it. feel It's a FOMO. It's learning to be okay with the FOMO. Yeah, I don't have that. Yeah, I, you're a different breed. I don't have that. I am excited to miss out. That's unbelievable. Yeah, I've just done enough stuff in my life to know 
how little fun I've had at the parties I've attended. You know what I mean? True. Forced uh, lying to yourself. Yeah. Everybody's like, this is the time of our lives. It's going to be great. Yeah. And I don't know why. I mean, I I don't anymore, you know? Yeah. I was going to say, I don't know why I still listen to them. And I'm like, yeah, uh, you know what? I am going to, I'm going to get out there. I'm going to make a decision to have fun at this party where I don't know anybody. And then I get there and I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? And you want to get out. I don't care about my friend's birthday. Fuck off. See you next year. And that's and that's how you water friendships. Again, might be a little bit of a blind spot for me. You spend. F- I talk to my friends on the phone. Yeah, you're good at that. Yeah, yeah. I think you're you you uh, you live with a friend I talk to on the phone quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, she loves talking on the phone. Oh, I know. Yeah, it's insane. Mm-hmm. I for a long time thought that I was the only person she talked to on the phone because I didn't think anyone could possibly talk on the phone more than we did. And then I found out she. FaceTimes other people for like three hours a day. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, you're ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It's a it's an energy level that I would I would pay to take a slice of. Yeah, to ha- I would put it in my breakfast every morning if I could. If I could, I haven't come around to it yet. But I I one day I would be like, could you just give me a few drops of your blood? Right, right. To put in my oatmeal every morning. Yeah. So that I might have more ounces of caring. It would be so funny. And energy. You come out with like glasses, just like a little <laughs> bit more depressed. <laughs> <laughs> but she's an energetic depressed. I mean, she has her days, I suppose. <laughs> her months, her years. I've seen months where it was like not, you know, yeah. not real pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. But. She's back you, out there now. I know. Yeah. And if you ever need someone to talk to on the phone. Yeah. She's a good friend to have. Oh, yeah. And and I do and I don't, you know. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I don't need to talk on the phone as much as she does. Okay, when you have somebody that loves to talk on the phone, do you let them talk it out or do you Fuck say... I'm no, get- I don't let them talk it out. You don't think I'm ending those calls when I need to end them? I would be on the phone with her all goddamn day. But when do you let her talk and then you get yours out and then you dip? You know, for the most part, I like there is a balance of me talking and then her talking. But also with my really close friends, it doesn't always have to be like that. Like if they're going through some shit, they can call. We can talk about their shit for an hour and a half. You will let you know what I mean? You don't have to have a thing. No, I don't have to have a thing. They don't even have to ask me how I'm doing. If it's if it's so clear, like a friend of mine recently was like going through some just like piles of stuff. We just talked about her, her stuff about her stuff. She doesn't have to ask me how I am to check a box. You know what I mean? Um, Mm -hmm. and, and the reverse is also true. Like I've also had my stuff where I just like, you know, gave it to them and we just didn't talk about their stuff that day. Right. And you just want, now when you do that, do you, are you like listening or are you genuinely trying to give advice or are you just like, let it out, babe, let it out. I'm listening and I have them let it out. And I try really hard not to give advice that's unsolicited. But my friends ask me for advice a lot, even if they don't do what I suggest. And even if they don't end up wanting to hear it. And I have and I've said um, to this person, you know, I've I've said to our friend before, just like, you know, she's texted and been like, can you talk? You know, I'm having issues with this. And I've been like, I don't think I'm going to say what you want me Mm -hmm. to say right now. Like, I don't think I'm going to be able to give you what you're looking for right now. And I say that because I know that she has so many other friends who like, who will, you know, who will tell her what she needs in that moment. And if I'm just like, well, why don't you blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And and I know myself and I know my moods. And so it's like, I'm not going to feel good about being of service to a friend if I call back and I'm irritable or annoyed or, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. Yeah, you're like I'm not. I don't, I don't have. I don't have the capacity. Yeah, it's a lose lose to to listen to what you have and not just feel blankly. Yeah, I'm gonna shit on you, dude. Right. I'm gonna shit on you if I call you right now. Do you do you want a high school football coach right now? Right. Because that's all I have. Right. Right. Yeah, I have. I have no nurturing bone in my body. That's right now. Right now. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I need more of that too. Anyways. Yeah. I think a lot of people need just know what you just know what you have to give. Yeah. And if she had and if she had said cuz she knows me, if she had said, "No, I really need the brutal truth right now." I couldn't have called her any faster to give it to her. You know what I mean? Yes. God, I that's therapeutic to me to just tell people 
I wish I would do to tell people more just the brutal truth yeah. of what I hear. Yeah. Instead of sugarcoating it. It can get them to leave you alone real quick. It can get them. Not, I mean, if you really are tired of hearing about a problem. How much quickly? How That's the funny thing is when you do tell the brutal truth, though, uh, how much quicker that phone call ends. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this particular issue we've been talking about for one year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I so. Know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, and that's hard to go through, but also you, you get people the brutal, honest truth, and then they don't listen to you, and they come back, and then it's like, okay, you're an adult person, you make your own, you make your own decisions, I've told it to you, but you're, I'm not in your body, you're not in my body, I'm not gonna feel frustrated because you're not listening to me, and you're coming back with the same issue. After two or three times, you know what, that's your decision, and now I'll just listen to you have it out. Right. And I've, and I also have said, and recently just like, I support you, whatever you want to do. I love you. And I want you to get everything you want. Like, right. I think you deserve everything you want. Yeah. Um, I've also said like, I'm sorry, I don't have anything to say that I haven't said before. That's good. That's a good line. You know? Yeah. And I, I've Maybe you wrote him. that and framed it and mailed it to her. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't have anything to say that I haven't said before. I just love you and I want you to get everything you want. It's a very strong statement. Yeah. You should crochet that. Yeah. I like that. Uh, I won't crochet it because I can't. Uh, and I'm unwilling to take the time to learn how to do that. JP? But I do like the idea. And that, mm -hmm. my friends, is how you say no. <laughs> yeah. I'm unavailable for the experience of crocheting that on something. But thank you for your suggestion. You're welcome. <laughs> I wasn't going to do it either. That's why I was yeah, throwing no, it no on No one's going to do it. No one's going to do that. Should we do another call? Yeah. Hello. Um, my question, I am 31 years old and my dad, who is 71 years old, lives with me. He has Parkinson's, so is very disabled, but also is in a deep, deep depression. So every single day and night, it's him, you know, essentially staring at the wall. Um, what I'm wondering is how do you stay out of that sludge when the person you live with is so buried underneath what they're going through? Thank you. Mm, that was... Uh that was deeper than me. Easy breezy, right? What do you think, Catherine? <laughs> what do you think, miss? I got this one. Pretty tough stuff, huh? A pretty, uh, pretty tough stuff. I'll start. You chew on it. Um, first of all, I'm so sorry that you're going through this. This sounds really, really tough. I don't have personal experience with this. I do have experience with a depressed parent um, with physical health issues also and taking that on emotionally. And it's been very painful. And for that, I've gone to a support group for uh, codependency, which I'm not saying that you're codependent, but also in these situations, it's fucking impossible not to be. It's just impossible not to be. We take on other people's problems as our own because we love them and we hate to see them suffer. It's maybe the most painful thing in the world to watch someone you love suffer. In fact, I mean, I would argue that it's more painful than personally suffering through the thing is having to watch someone you love go through it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so hard to just be like, this is what's on my side of the street. This is what's on this person's side of the street. But really what it comes down to is like trying to find acceptance of what you can control and trying to let go of what you can't control. That is so much easier said than done that it's hard for me even to listen to myself say that out loud because I truly think it's impossible. And I think all we can do is like do the work on ourselves to aim for progress and not perfection. Like you're never going to be able to perfectly be like, oh, my dad's staring out the window again. I feel nothing about that. And you shouldn't. You know, that's not, that's not living as like a an empathetic human being, right. but you also deserve to be happy and you shouldn't both have to suffer depression, your dad's depression. You know what I mean? Is right. this jogging anything for you? What do you think? No, I think, yeah, it does. I just, 
Oh, I guess I, uh, I lost my parent when I was 22. I lost my mom. And I always looked back. She was very sick the last year. And kind of what I, I used to beat myself up over uh, how I like handled the last like super extreme sickness. And then I was like, one, I, I looked back and was like, you, you, you are experiencing like an inhumane, like life experience almost like it's not fair what you're going through too. So I, I think I always just go like, don't, and nobody, nobody like, there's not like a book on how to deal with stuff. Like you were saying, it's like, no matter like compartmentalize, be with him when you can. And then when, when you're not like live your life or whatever, like you can't do that. So I, I mean, I'm like, don't like be as easy on yourself as you, or as, um, compassionate with yourself as you are with your loved one who is, who's dealing with the sickness themselves, because it's, you're both like, essentially you both, you both have the disease at that point because you're having to, to deal with it. And so like, I, I, I would say that. And then it's kind of like, I, this is going to sound so like, uh, like easier said than than done, but know that you I don't thirty one years old. Okay, you're dealing with with the with a dad who is Parkinson's and is very depressed. You are going through right now light years of life's lessons. Hmm. When you are forty five, you will have an outlook on life beyond what most forty five year old people will have. You will have an appreciation for life beyond what a lot of 45-year-old people will have because you will, you've will you seen the darkest side of it. And so when things are good, you know how how you are going to appreciate the good so much more. It sounds, I don't know why, it sounds very weird to say, but but being on the darkest side of life gives the lightest side of life so much, you will find so much more appreciation in it if there's any silver lining in that. I don't know if that's dealing. It's I don't know if that's easy to deal with it now, but yeah, no, I, I hear say. so much good advice in that, and I love the idea of like take care of yourself too. Like you're watching him suffer, watch yourself also, observe yourself, and take care of yourself the way that you would take care of a friend who is in this situation or a loved yeah. one who is in this situation. That might mean taking breaks. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know how what level of care your dad needs physically right now, but like might mean taking yourself to a movie, taking yourself out of the house, going for more walks or whatever, you know, yeah. um, getting more support from people on the phone. And I also forgot the next thing I was going to say. Well, is there there's um like support groups for yeah. people going through illness too, right? I mean, yeah. I don't know if maybe, maybe your dad has said that he doesn't want that or he, he is trying to go through that, but like there's, there's special, you know, I don't know whether it's therapy or whatever else, like for people who are dealing with this. Well, yeah. I mean, as long as we're giving your dad stuff to do, he could turn on the TV. He doesn't need to sit there staring at the wall, you yeah, know? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Put on a show for the guy. I don't know. I mean, Fox News is better than nothing. <laughs> Fox News, for heaven's sake. <laughs> yeah, that's your next crochet project, JP. Fox News, a little throw pillow. What do you think, <laughs> JP? Well, uh, everything that you both said uh, so far, but not to repeat those, but I've had family members go through similar experiences with taking care of their parents in their 20s and 30s and seeing what it, how the burden it's put on them. So definitely finding some help. I know that uh, homes, elderly care is very expensive. It's not an option for everybody. But to find somebody, maybe if it's another family member who can come in every once in a while, tag you out and do the things that you're saying to be able to take care of yourself, go to a movie, get some time away. I mean, I would hate to see this person. I mean, as a, if I were the, the, in the if I were a father in this situation, I would not want to be a burden on my children. And I would not want to like your hope is that you can have a, a child and let them flourish and have a full life. And if she's going to be spending her thirties into her forties, maybe 
missing out on a lot of opportunities, I'd be, I'd feel I'd feel horrible about that. Um, and that's something that I really hope that she's she doesn't you know she does everything she can to make sure that 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 does not happen. That she does not miss out on her life. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Is she siblings? Aunts, uncles, cousins? I mean, it doesn't sound like it. It doesn't, you know, a lot of people have other family, but that doesn't mean that they have other support. You know what I mean? Like my sister does the vast majority of taking care of our mom. Yeah. Um, And when our mom needs taken care of, I mean, she lives independently, you know. But she falls a lot. Like, there's, she's broken multiple bones and ended up on my sister's couch m- a number of times. And, um, and, and I'm not someone she can call to go pick my mom up to take her to her doctor's appointment, to take her to get her glasses fixed or whatever. You know what I mean? To just yeah. bring her shit day in and day out when she's on the couch with the broken whatever, you yeah. know? Um, so, yeah, I mean... Unfortunately, even if there are more people, there isn't necessarily more support. And it sounds like since he lives with her, that's kind of the deal. But maybe you can pay someone then maybe you can to, pay to someone. come in and just be like. Maybe you can ask for help. Yeah. Ask for help from a family member who is not helping. Be like, this is too much for me. Right. Visiting nurse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's covered. I don't know. I know that that's covered for my mom, but my mom won't let anyone into her place. Um, well, Sucks. yeah, yeah, that is tough. Field trip. Gonna need you to elaborate on that. We take him out for a field trip. Take him out. Take him out. I mean, I don't really know what his deal is, you know. We go, we go out, we go, we get on the other side of the window. We go out, we right. get, you know, yeah. or something. But sometimes, know, who knows? sometimes with Parkinson's though, if, depending on the stage of it, like, he may not be that right. mobile. Right. Uh, I worry about that. Um, and then what about the other 23 and a half hours of the day or whatever? Right. You know what I mean? It's a good idea. Yeah. If you can. If you can. Yeah. I agree. But I, I think, I, do, I know Visiting Nurse Association is a VNA. Uh huh. Right. That my mom was part of VNA. Yeah. I don't know if it's, I don't know the coverage of it or whatever, but that was the, the, their whole point of it was going yeah. to people and staying with them. I do know that putting someone in assisted living is so expensive that it makes me sick to my stomach. Uh, We tried to do that with my mom, $4,000 a month. Health insurance doesn't do a thing. You have to have like a special kind of insurance. And I asked her to look into it and she didn't. Yeah. I don't, I mean, maybe it's just being, then admitting that you're, you're struggling and you need help. Telling anybody. I mean, telling me is a start, but I can't do anything about it. Yeah. Clip this up. Send this in an email. If I could, I wouldn't. I would say no. And that's what boundaries are. That's right. That's right. Sometimes you have to have boundaries with your callers. I mean, she wasn't asking me for anything except for advice. And I just said that I would not help. (laughs) We can cut this part out if you want. I love that. Or I fuck like it. it. Make it the clip for this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, I wonder, like, do, if, it, you know, long shot, but if he is a member, uh, if he was a member of the Armed Forces, you know, the VA Association, there may be some opportunities to, that they may be able to help a little bit, too. Um, I mean, it's, you know. Yeah, for sure. Just because I know my, my my father was in, was in the Army and he uh, needed some hearing stuff and they were able to help out so maybe they could do i don't know it's a it's a, it's a shot yeah totally if not for this call or for somebody else out there that's should we do one more call or how are we doing that was a that was a very deep one that yeah. was a very yeah. tough yeah. one do we have a, a oh, lighter we do? one the, 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 the Please. plants let's do plants <laughs> god let's do plants <laughs> fuck shit and that was harder than i even thought because i thought it was just parkinson's but it was like he's depressed yeah hi lara I need your advice. How on earth do I keep my outdoor plants alive? The tiny little succulents, the hanging basket of flowers. I try and try and I just can't seem to keep them alive. Please help. I'm going to tell you right now, I have 
many fake plants in my apartment. I have one real one and it is dead. And I have not come to terms with that because my mom gave it to me. It's in a little heart-shaped mm-hmm. pot. She gave it to me on Valentine's Day. Um, I really wish I could have done more for it. I tried. I don't know how to I don't know how often to water a cactus. I guess once and then it dies. This is what happened for me. There. Killed it immediately. <laughs> and it's just been slowly. I watered it again the other day because it looked dead. I was like, well, maybe I need to revive it. It didn't fucking work last time, I'll tell you that. It won't cactuses don't come back. They don't come back. Cactuses are unforgiving. Once they start dying, they're dead. I <laughs> have tried so hard with so many plants. This is what you need to do. Stop stop thinking you're superheroes. Google the easiest plants outside. Google and don't and don't if not the first link. Get don't don't go on plants.com. They're selling whatever the most expensive plant is and telling you it's easy. Do your actual research, figure out your your uh, uh, landscape, your air, your watering, wherever you're from and Google the easiest plants to grow in that region and and don't and it doesn't sound like you have the time or the energy. Not blaming you. Sure don't either. Got a lot of fake plants now. And um, just, they they might not be the prettiest things, but they're not going to be brown and dead. How about that? That's prettier than your your dead birds of paradise. That's right. That's right. Um, Taking a live fern over a dead orchid any day. 110%. Orchids aren't bad. I kept an orchid along for a damn long time. I put on my calendar when I was supposed to water it. It said every 21 days that little fucker lived. Really? Oh, yeah. I've never been able to keep an orchid alive. And I've I've done other things. You've I've done, done other things? I've done. I've uh, um, uh, baked chicken bones. And shredded them up in a uh, blender before because somebody on uh, Instagram told me that the minerals in the bones, you put that in the soil with the plants. I've done, I've done, I've done a lot of things. You don't have to do all those things, but there are plants that will come back to life. Not, I also don't think you succulents are supposed to be outside. Um, unless they're the giant ones. My cactus is inside and it's deceased. Yeah. But also, what do you have a, are you in Idaho? Cactuses aren't supposed to be in Idaho. Um, just don't go. Start, you're not superheroes, okay? Yeah. We're, no, we're not all Martha Stewart. Yeah. Get a fern. Get a fake plant. Hang it outside. Next call. No, not next call. I want to keep talking about this. Get a fake plant. Uh, who do you think you are? You know what I mean? Yes. Do you enjoy tending to them? I can't relate to that impulse at all. The hardest thing is when you do go out of town and then you expect somebody else to love your child like you love your child. Don't you like it when people are like, no, I like doing it. I like taking care of it. It's like, yeah, no, I just do it for the responsibility. I know that it looks like a fake plant. I just like a chore. I like a good chore. I like to look at the one new leaf every year and go, look what mama made. (laughs) (laughs) It, it, it plants are uh, plants are it it will tug at your heartstrings when one you've really tried hard on dies, but you have to go. If by it's mother nature your heartstrings you mean piss you off, I'm so pissed, dude. Do you know how many like effortless plants I've let, I, I I let an aloe plant die? Are I don't supposed think to be those easy? even like can. Yeah. Yeah. Succulents are supposed to be a walk in the park because you don't have to do anything to them. But if you think about them too much, right? When you sometimes when you try too hard, you go, "I gotta water you." You can't water it once in a while. And you know what I'm thinking to myself as I'm watering it? I'm like, it "Rains in the desert sometimes." Yeah, I maybe I think not maybe, on this species. It doesn't, I guess. Well, I think maybe you gotta take them out of your closet. It's not in my closet. Oh. It's next to the window. Maybe it shouldn't be next to the window. It's also, a cactus. Also, yeah. Uh, you don't think it can handle a light? little bit of an hour of sun through a window every day? Maybe it is too. You know, it's hard. It's hard. They're they're like children. And and some people have it and some people don't. It, I research mine a lot. Some people aren't ready to research what I research and they're not ready to bake chicken bones. And I literally don't know what kind of plant <laughs> I have. See? I don't know what it is. Uh, there's apps where you can take pictures of the leaves and they will tell you what kind of plant it is and and based off of the patterns in the leaves, what you've been doing wrong. Oh my God, what apps plant are snap. those? Plant Snap is one of them, yeah. But plant Snap? Awesome mm-hmm. is the one I use. And it's like, and I'm not saying you're not a good 
Can parent? you send that because to me? One of you send that? those to me? Yeah. But you're not going to do it. Well, if you just said I'm not saying it because you're not allowed to say it, you really said it then, didn't you? Yeah. 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 But here's the thing. Just, but my thing with you is just saying, and maybe with our caller, just accept that maybe this isn't your thing. You know, it's not my thing. I said it was a gift from my mom. Did I say <laughs> I went out and bought it? No. I said it was a gift from my mom. I, I killed it immediately. You think I think this is my thing? But don't get mad. Either do the do the easy route or or get to researching. That's what I think about plants. I mean, I think all I really need to do is throw this plant away. Yeah. Come to terms with the fact that it didn't happen for us. Because um, like, a, like a good plant that uh, you have in your house to help uh, give you some good oxygen, a dead plant, just, it's just emitting uh, death into no your shit. home. Mm-hmm. I'm making this up. You know what but I'm it's gonna not do? a good <laughs> it's not a good look. I'm going to take the plant out, leave the soil in keep the pot and have people think that something's growing. Maybe I'll keep like a t- tiny piece of a leaf so that it's yeah. just coming out. So yes. It looks like it's starting to grow. And you go, and you take a little picture and you go, she's eight months old. Caption it new life. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's so sweet. And actually, it's old death. It yeah. died a long time ago. And yeah. I don't know. You're going to have to go outside and find a new new leaf every other day. Oh. Yeah. But I didn't the think about using an too. actual leaf. I was thinking of just because parts of this little thing are still, I mean, it's a pale green, but. <laughs> I've seen this pale green before. <laughs> It's but like it's a, there. Yeah. It's, it's some, almost um, see-through green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit of pigmentation there. And I'm like, I'll just leave one in. Yeah. Um, I also could just cut a tiny part off of one of my fake plants. That hey, might be the move. What if we just... Cut a leaf off one of my fucking fake plants, dude. I, think, I am 100% doing that when I get home. I'm 100% Lord, doing that when I get There's nothing sadder than just a pot. I really don't think... A pot with still soil in it. A pot with a leaf. I although a full grown leaf is that going to be silly because people are going to be like wow it's kind of crazy that your plant didn't grow like a stem and then a couple buds and then multiple leaves it's wild that just one leaf <laughs> I'm, t- I'm, not, I'm telling you through the soil it's like a that to me is like a, a dude with with a box of, box spring on the floor for a mattress you know what Catherine <laughs> what would you have me do I think that you... Because you've said it's dead. Yeah. It's not coming back. I think we should give up. I think you say, I'm done. This isn't my thing. We get a fake plant or we get a... Uh, will you Google a, uh, a, a steak plant? Those are pretty easy. I think I'm still going to do my idea. It's interesting. Okay. Okay. And, and that, I mean, let that be a lesson to our callers. It's okay to not take the advice. I'm not going to take your advice. I'm picturing the fake plant off of which I'm going to cut a little thing. It's going to look like little buds on a stem. It's going to look like this little guy is just starting to grow, and no one will know except for everyone who's listening. Uh, I, I think that I think it's somewhere way to go. It's hilarious, and it's cute. I think it's what funny. you do. I is mean, you, I get to keep you, the you, thing. You go to an arts and crafts store. Keep okay. Keep your pot with your soil. You're already thinking too big, out. JP. No. You're already thinking arts too big. Arts and crafts big. store. Find a fake stem of a plant. Put that in. No maintenance. You don't have to go get any new flowers every few weeks. No maintenance, but it's a task, and I won't get new flowers every few weeks. I'll use a fake piece of an existing fake plant in my home. It's just it's it's like you took it's like you're displaying failure, and I just I go why not why not just Instead of that pot, why don't we put a pillow there? The pot is shaped like a heart, and it's from my mother. Have you not been listening? Right. I know. That is nice. That's uh, the only reason I give a <laughs> shit about this plant. I like the pot. I like the pot. We could put candy in the pot. I don't eat candy. Well, which is why it stays in the pot as decoration. It's a small thing. I don't want a candy pot. That makes no sense for who I am. You want to... This, this absolute con makes perfect sense for who I am. Um, Funny and smart. Creative. Have you ever heard of someone doing this before? I mean, my mind's really made up. What did you say earlier? I... I have nothing else to tell you besides what I've already told you. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Unsound Advice. 
You can hear Catherine co-hosting her podcast, Cheaties, with fellow comedian, the hilarious Lace Larrabee, where they find healing through laughter after sharing stories of infidelity. It's available wherever you get your podcasts. If you'd like some unsound advice, send me a voice memo at lara at unsoundadvicepod.com. Maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming episode. We probably will. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Catherine. Have a great day.